Joe Haldane. I'm the chairman and CEO of IR4, which is which means basically I'm responsible for uh, the day-to-day um, running of the organization, which itself is based in Japan, uh, in both Nagoya, where we have our HQ, and in Osaka University, where we have a research center at the School of International Public Policy. Um, we started off doing conferences in Japan in 2009. Uh, because we wanted to bring people to Japan and essentially um, internationalize the conversations there that were happening in education. Um, in 2011, uh, you may uh, remember that there was an earthquake and then a tsunami, um, and then a nuclear problem in Japan, which meant that nobody came to Japan or wanted to come to Japan, which presented us with a bit of a problem. So we thought, well, we'll have to go outside of Japan. And so we went outside of Japan and we went to the UK. We went to Brighton um, by the sea and we went there for no other reason than it was my hometown. And I thought, well, I can go there in summer and maybe we can put a conference on. That conference became the European Conference on Education. And it was the first time we went outside of Japan. And we have then built this this organization uh, and held events on three continents. And we hold about 15 uh, events a year under the IFO banner. And we hold another five or 10 um, working with different entities, associations, organizations, governments, NGOs, et cetera, in, um, uh, to, to do another five or 10 as well. We usually um, seek to bring international, intercultural, and interdisciplinary into everything we do. That's the mission. So when I say usually, when it goes wrong, we know when it's going wrong because we don't have anything that's international, we don't have anything that's intercultural, and we don't have anything that's interdisciplinary. This is an example of a very, very successful conference because we are from, and uh, I have it in front of me here, from more than 60 different countries. Um, The latest stats I have, we're over 350 delegates, And um, so that means we're a very, very diverse group. So what IFOR is about is about bringing people together from all sorts of different nations and cultures and engaging with them, engaging with the foreign, both in terms of discipline and in terms of nation and culture. And um, so that is what we're about. And that's the underpinning on on which, you know, you are uh, encouraged uh, to engage over the next few days. So please do keep that in mind that um, you're meant to be a little destabilized. You're meant to be in a situation where you're thinking, but but this doesn't apply to my country. Well, maybe it does. Maybe you just have to reach out a bit more. Or if you think this isn't quite in my discipline, then maybe your discipline's about to open up. Maybe you're about to open a new bridge. So please keep that in mind as we go forward. I'm now going to recognize scholarship winners. And the reason I'm going to do that at this point in my speech is because usually I forget to do it. Um, And so uh, I've done quite a number of these things where I've walked off the stage and then somebody said, you've got to go back on and recognize the scholarship winners. So um, we're going to recognize the scholarship winners now. Um, On the uh, screen, you can see here uh, a number of scholarship winners that uh, we have. And these are people who would otherwise not be able to uh, uh, participate in IFO conferences. And we'd like to recognize Sanjukta Chakrabarti from Amity University in India, Gulsad Dost of the University of Durham in the UK, Mira Gungir of the Open University of Mauritius, Alexandra Olowska of the Jagiellonian University in Poland, um, Aruna Parandama of Christ University India, Chloe Para Anastasiadu of Tokyo University of the Arts in Japan, Michelle Puga Sadubi of University College London, um, Manish Sharma of Lovely Professional University in Indonesia in India, sorry, um, Louise Sutton of the Marino Institute of Education in Ireland, and Lana Zaita of McGill University in Canada. Please can you um, recognize them now? So back to the international, the intercultural, and the interdisciplinary, one of the most uh, exciting things about coming to an IFO conference is meeting someone from uh, a number of different uh, countries and places. And uh, we have a score sheet of countries in our program 
this program you do not have. Now, you do not have the very simple reason that the printer did not put the cover on. And so these arrived yesterday without cover. And so the, uh, the printers shrugged in a wonderfully Spanish way and uh, has offered to reprint kindly after threats. Um, and hopefully we will be having this uh, program delivered to you very, very soon. We're hoping it's going to come in, in the morning. Otherwise, everything, of course, the program is online, but you will have this conference guide uh, with you very soon. Perhaps if you come from a country, you might raise your hand or shout or scream or do whatever you, you feel. If you come from these countries, um, we this is on one, one person, okay? These are countries with just one person present here. But if you're the one person, then you are the academic diplomat from your country, which means that people will either come away thinking your country is wonderful and I want to visit there, or I have no desire to go there at all. So you have a heavy, heavy responsibility. Okay, so on one, we have Zimbabwe, Vietnam, Ukraine, Turkey, Tanzania, Switzerland, Sweden, Paraguay, Nepal, Macedonia, Jordan, the Czech Republic, Botswana, Armenia, Albania. Anyone come from any of those? See this? No, you don't understand what I'm doing here. That was on one representation. It's just, just wait. Okay. Okay, so there's three people from Georgia. Five, oh dear. Ho hopefully one, one of the people from Georgia is, okay, we'll see. Okay, wait your turn. When it comes, I expect a response. On two people, Netherlands, Mauritius, Lithuania, Lebanon, Hungary, Greece, Colombia, Algeria. Were you in that group, anybody? Yes, a few hands. On three, Nigeria. New Zealand, Indonesia, Ghana, Germany, France, Chile. Yes? But very quiet people, apart from the Georgians. Um, on four, Australia, Oman, Mexico, Finland. You're more than five. You just don't know it. United Arab Emirates, on five, United Arab Emirates, Slovakia, Malaysia, Italy. Yes. On six, Israel, Hong Kong, China. On seven, Thailand, Spain, Poland, Ireland. Yes. On 10, Croatia and Canada, tied. Okay, there's a, are they Canadians? Croatians, okay, well, I had a 50% chance. On 11, Philippines and Georgia. Philippines, yes, it's a long way. Georgia, 11. Okay, you missed your cue. Japan on 12. Japan? Well, how does they must? shy. On 13, Norway, India, Brazil. Okay. On 20, where are you from? Norway, very good. On 20, Port Portugal. Yes, hello, Portugal. The UK on 26. Yes. South Africa on 26. Oh. And last but not least, that small country that's also a global hegemon, the United States of America. There's 53 of you. That's quite enough, I think. Okay, so your mission, should you choose to accept it, over the course of the next few days is to meet people from other countries. 
to exchange as many business cards or contact details as you can, and to engage across those barriers of nation, culture, and discipline. So that's your mission. If you are not already an I4 member, do please continue, uh, consider being an I4 member, signing up. It's not very much, and it allows you to attend I4 conferences online and participate online um, throughout the course of a year. So it's a very, very good value proposition and allows you to keep up with what we're doing. Also attend plenary sessions uh, such as this, where you'll hear me make versions of the same speech again and again. Um, and uh, but you, this this is now I think we're something like 15 conferences, but I can go through them in my mind where we are now. We're Barcelona. We're next in Kyoto. Then I think we're um, we're going to be in Chiang Mai. Then I think we're in Tokyo. Then I think we're in Hawaii. Then I think we're in Chiang Mai again. And then I think we're in Japan. We're in Paris. We're in Porto. We're all over the place. So if you can't come and see us, and of course we prefer you come and see us, but you can tune in online and you can engage online. So please do. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say to you, apart from I have to recognize um, uh, Sue Balin, who unfortunately won't be able to be here for medical reasons um, today. Um, but she is um, the driver, the local driver of this conference and has been since the beginning um, in 2015. She came to a conference in Japan and she was from the University of Barcelona. And she said, I want to bring this conference here. And she spent uh, a number of years doing so. And in 2015, we finally went there. And um, uh, aside from a few hiccups, most notably COVID, um, we've had a great relationship with uh, this city. And it's been through Sue Ballin that we are here. So I'd like to recognize her. Uh, and I, I, I hope that she might be tuning in um, online. If she is, thank you, Sue. And um, Okay, now on to some more meaty stuff. Um, and I'd like to introduce our Executive Vice President and Provost, um, <clears throat> Anne Boddington. Um, Anne is also with the University of Middlesex as Pro Vice Chancellor um, uh, for Research and Development. Is that correct? Research and Knowledge Exchange. Um, and she's previously held a senior administrative positions at Kingston University as PBC, and previous to that was uh, Dean um, of Arts and Humanities at uh, Brighton University. Um, and that's that's where we met. Uh, we've been friends and colleagues for, for nearly 10 years now, and um, she has uh, joined IR4 um, for, uh, for, for, for about the past six months, helping to knock us into shape um, on the academic side. And, uh, and on the program side, uh, where, where she's been uh, uh, excellent. And she's here today to talk to you a bit about IF4, her relationship to it, and um, the importance of interdisciplinarity. Professor Ambodent. Thought I was the same height as Joe, but clearly he's taller than me. Um, very nice to see everybody. Um, thank you, Joe. You've got a future career, I think, as a stand-up <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so when all this gets too much. Um, it's really lovely to see everybody. Um, and as you can probably tell from my voice um, and from what Joe said, we met in Brighton, um, where I was uh, then executive dean, um, and I was asked to speak at an IFOR conference. Um, and Joe's given you that little bit of history. But one of the things that I find interesting about this, and I'll just tell you a little bit about me and how I kind of fit into I4 a little bit, which is I started very much as I'm an architect by training. Um, and so I started very much from a very practical um, history working in the polytechnic sector. So I'm really interested in not only how we develop and create knowledge, but also how we put it into some form of action. Um, it's partly why, I've, as I say, I've remained in that polytechnic sector because I'm interested in that relationship. But I also started as a teacher. I started on the ground um, and really trying to work out um, 
what goes between one mind and another or between one mind and many minds in, in many of those cases. And, and I've become really, really interested in that, that very simple question in one sense, which is what goes on in people's minds between me speaking here and what's happening to all of you, whether it's about your breakfast, you've just eaten and wish these people would shut up, or whether it's actually something uh, much more profound that happens as we give lectures, seminars, or indeed have a dialogue of some kind. So I'm, I'm really interested, if you like, in the architectures and structures of, of education, which is a lot of what I do and have done throughout my career, including how higher education and the world interact. And so I did a lot of work in what the UK called the glam sector, which I really liked, but it was actually about galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, and how we're all learning organizations in that sense, but often we don't even see ourselves in the same sector. And in museums, we often talk about informal learning, and we talk about the formal learning of um, higher education. And I think those things have always fascinated me, and I could never work out why that conversation was so different. Um, and maybe we need to kind of bring some of those things together. The other thing I've done a lot in my career, um, for all sorts of reasons, actually, but we had a rather nice dinner last night. We were just talking about what what forges or fosters your own career and your career prospects. And I look out here as an oldie and kind of see lots of lots of faces that have are at various stages of their career. Um, and it it fascinates me. One of the pieces of of advice I was given when I was um, when I was first uh, in senior management um, was. Don't get, don't look down. So keep a little string on the top of your head and look up and out and make sure you're as out in the kind of world as you are in the job that demands of you. And I've got a kind of rule of thumb, which is that um, it's a kind of 60% of what you do is your role. It's the thing that you're, is on your job description. 20% is for all the people that you interact with and 20% is for you. And I think that works at every level, works whether you're doing a PhD and it works if you're a senior manager and I now run and have done for the past, I don't know, 10 years, very large chunks of quite big institutions. Um, and it still works. And I still need time for me to do me. I need time for the people I have to care for. And then I have the job to do. But that rule of thumb, I think, is, is something that fascinates me. But I've I've also spent a long time doing what I would describe as public service, um, something you get paid less than the minimum wage for usually, but but that gives you an incredible oversight, which is I've worked both actually in Portugal a lot for um, FCT, which is the sort of government body that gives out funding for research, but, but also for the UK government and for governments across the world, including in India and a lot in, in Hong Kong and in Israel and Palestine. And those things have taught me an awful lot about the policies, processes, and mechanisms that steer how we behave. And just to give you, in this context, and particularly when we talk about publishing, that, that, that issue of things like citations, how we count you know, volume over quality, for example. Lots of you will be promoted on volume, not quality how many papers you produce, how many papers you publish, not how good they are. And I, I'm very interested in the challenges of those sorts of things and how our policies and practices do that. So what I do now is kind of ask awkward questions. And one of the great things about now being, I'm actually interim uh, Pro Vice Chancellor at Middlesex because they needed one. Um, so I said I'd step back in. But you could ask those awkward questions, which are, are things like, um, why do we teach people what we already know? You know, after 20 years, do I still bore people with the things that I, I know and study? Or should we be telling our students um, what we don't know and what we might be able to research together? And I think those are the sorts of big questions for me that this conference and many others kind of start to, to bring to life. And the things that fascinate me now are how to build confidence, how to build confidence in young people to speak or young scholars to speak, 
how to stunt, sometimes teach old scholars to shut up. Um, and I think there's a kind of moment when people get talked at rather than talked with or to, um, how to have that sense of a dialogue and really how to sustain that, a sense of curiosity. And that's what I mean about telling people what we've, what we've known for 20 years rather than the really difficult thing, which is what don't we know and what do we have to still discover and how do we discover that together? That's much more humbling position to be in. It's a much more difficult position to be in quite often, but I think it's it's really important. So a lot of the work I do now is around governance. It's partly why um, I'm here. Um, I'm here because actually we were talking in IF4 about some of those things. So that's where IF4 kind of uh, comes into that conversation. And Joe asked me um, to join um, and to work on those things um, with him. As you see, he's got a fantastic career as a CEO, um, stand-up comedian, and um, and really driving a, a fascinating organisation forward, I think. Um, and like probably many of you, and I know Donald is going to speak after that, would probably say much the same as me. I think one of the things that's amazing about conference like this is the audiences and the, and the people you encounter. And they're not like going to disciplinary conferences. They're not like... They're not like that little bubble that you talk in your own subject with your own acronyms and everybody else around you doesn't really know what you're talking about other than that little that little bubble. And I think that kind of sense that the con conferences like this are, are really, whether big or small, they're real opportunities to open up that space. And lots of people will be talking and with audiences that are right on the, those edges of, of the disciplines um, and, and conversations you usually have. And that's quite a tough place to be. You put yourself out there, you kind of say, oh, this is, this is a little bit more challenging. So we are about dangerous ideas in that sense, but we're also about the things that often we can't do in our own institutions. We talk to our colleagues, we talk to the people we teach with, we don't talk to the people down the corridor. We usually email them. We don't have a conversation about what they do or how they see the world in a slightly, slightly different way. So this is a chance to speak or to even learn the skills to approach the people that are just down the corridor or just across the corridor or just across any quadrangle or in any higher education institution. So I think... Joe's already talked about the interdisciplinary, intercultural, international. And I think that's that's easy to say, actually. It, well, if you can remember those three things. But it, but I think the really the really tricky thing about that is when, when we start talking about interdisciplinarity, the, the one of the first things that you come across quite often is it's rife. It's rife in government, it's rife in all those. Um, academic organizations how do we deal with interdisciplinarity and of course in order to do that you need to be good at your discipline you need to have the facility to not have to practice you have to practice your discipline you have to practice the scholarship and craft of that discipline but you have to have that in order to be able to open it out, you have to gain that confidence, first of all, um, the strength, the rigor, the scholarship of your own field. And then I think there's something about the willingness and indeed the great thing about conferences, the hospitality of other disciplines. So don't just go to the don't just don't don't just go to the the sessions that you're in, but go to the sessions beyond you and give those people the time too. And that sense of hospitality, that sense of openness to say, I'm going to listen to something I've never heard before, or something which is way outside my field. And that welcoming and that, um, that generosity of spirit, I think is what I have for, is fundamentally about. Um, and the thing that we all know is it's, you know, developing knowledge is difficult. It's messy. It doesn't come in a straight line. It doesn't come as you write the papers. It doesn't come in the order that you give the PowerPoint. It comes in all sorts of different um, and complex ways. And it also comes as, for, for IFOR, it comes, as, as Joe said, as we, 
as we land in different places, and we might hear about the same ideas, but as you land in a different place, the perspective on those ideas is completely different, and you re- you're received differently, and you receive ideas differently depending on where you are, depending on the time of day, depending on whether you had a good meal, depending on all sorts of things in terms of what time of day it is and the sorts of things that we do. So I think, for me, one of the things that's really fascinating about um, I4 is, um, is that opportunity. And post-COVID, Joe, we, we've been doing a lot of things online, Donald and myself, um, all the I4 team, but we've been kind of broadcasting into the into the void, literally, into the COVID void. We we didn't know really what that what it would be like to come back. And so Joe said, Let, let's do a kind of refresh and, and think about what those things are. And really think about that rebuilding of dialogue, discourse, interdisciplinary conversations and how best to do that. So rather than think up lots of new missions and lots of new slogans and all of those sorts of things. It's actually to just to go back to roots in a way, to go back to that sense of interdisciplinary, intercultural and international conversations and think about what it takes to do that um, and what it takes to do that now, um, to give time to listening, to give time to space and to encourage not only dialogue um, and discourse, but, but really not to demonise any one country over another or any one view over another. It is about to give equal space to that, to the views and eyes of of others. And I do implore you to do that. That, That's precisely what this space, unlike many others, is built for. And I think to do that well and to be interdisciplinary is really, really hard. And what we want to do is all be better at it. so one of the reasons I'm here and one of the reasons I, I want, want to scale up is, is really to hear from you. So if you've got ideas, if there are things that you think we could do um, in terms of how we build a kind of IFO family, if you like, or a team. I, I hesitate to say family because families can be terribly dysfunctional too. Um, so so I think I think we have to we have to think about that carefully. Um, like any community, there's always an outside. And I think it's really important to make sure we open those things up um, as we do. So I usually try and wear a relatively bright colour so you can find me, not only from a black badge, um, but I think it's really important to do that. Did you want to say something? Oh, sorry. No, no. It's all right. I just heard. (laughs) Um, So do stop me if you want to to talk about it, to talk about anything we might do. We've been talking about whether we we develop international mentoring programs, if there are things that you need that you don't necessarily get either in your own country, in your own field, where we can actually develop those dialogues. One of the ones that I'm particularly passionate about and interested about is integrity. Research integrity is is moving around the world um, as a kind of, idea it's nice to say difficult to do difficult to to manage and it comes back to things like volume of citations over quality of quality of of research it comes in how we work with each other talk to talk with each other and have a dialogue so stop me if there's ideas you want to um you want to bring together we've got so much to do in the world and i was listening to the BBC this morning talking about how we um, we reduce our uh, climate change ambitions and the dialogue of okay we don't want to bankrupt our nation in, in and force them to buy um, uh, electric cars too early versus we need to move forward on net zero that's one of those impossible debates but I think all of those debates are really pertinent to how we manage um, knowledge and how we develop knowledge as we as we go. So I do implore you one to talk to one another, also to tell us what we can do to make this caravan equally exciting every time you come back to it and equally fresh every time you come back to it, which I think is the is the real importance. So a warm welcome from me to IF4 and indeed to Barcelona. So thank you very much and I look forward to talking to you.